Don't be a statistic. Be something. I always thought my mom was a little crazy, a little hypersensitive about race. I know it about all my Lordians. I know because my mother has always told me that I was smarter than average in school because I'm a southern Vietnamese refugee. I figured I would just ignore the color of my skin. And in high school I did. It was easy with so few black students in my magnet high school. I was part of meritocracy and race simply didn't factor into merit. I know because my picture was featured in every brochure advertising my school's excellence in diverse education. I woke to a blurry vertical horizon and the dull ache of gravity pressed into my cheek. Both my wrists were wrapped in blood-soaked paper towel, bound with green velcro garden ties. Must have been the only thing around. Until I was admitted here. Then I heard what the people I used to call friends said about me. I know because my admission to Stanford was far from a firm direction. It was simply expected. I know what a model minority is because it's a title that I don't want. The people who had elected me class president the people who had seen me work hard in every class, the people who had seen my merit. No, I never attempted suicide that directly. It was the living room window I put both my fists through. I remember that. I was laughing about it at the time. I kept drinking. I know I'm not a model minority because my struggles to excel were not only the struggles of a minority, but the struggles of a majority. I got sober three Decembers ago when my best friend punched me in the face over a poker game, and I threw it through a window. Majority that simply wishes to be recognized as an individual. He only got in because he was black. I'm white, and though I was raised by a single mother going to grad school, I went to a good high school, and I was never really poor in any serious So I've never experienced oppression, as most people. I sat at my table in my plaza, surrounded by posters and CDs. The sun was baking me. I looked over at the steps, and there was a man preaching to no one. It wasn't yet two o'clock. The closet was empty, except for the bicyclists that come through every now and again. I sometimes feel as if I've come from a completely different world. But only because that's what people make it out to be. Dirty. Different. People sneer at me and feel sorry for me because of where I come from. I picked up the bottle again this winter. I've been moderate, drinking only on weekends. When he was finally tired of shouting at the cyclists, he turned to me and asked me, Are you a Christian? I said I was. What kind, he asked. I told him. I thought we could have a conversation, but instead he kept preaching. Preaching at me. I guess that was the wrong time. Every summer, church mission groups from all over the USA come to share the love of Jesus with the Reservation children. They cruise around the streets in the neighborhoods in their big white vans. It wasn't anything I hadn't heard before. The whispers from my peers and classmates. The bold and fiery letters that I see on the internet. And placards and tracts and history books and Facebook groups, of course. I worship the false idol. But already, I feel that heavy handed side of me, gripping my heart, slowing its beat, constricting my will. Telling us of all the great songs, and games, and teachings that God, Jesus, and the church had to offer us. First, my mom saw us the biggest thing service. I had rejected the grace of Jesus and embraced the trickery and corrupt of men, but hadn't I read the book of Revelation? That morning, when I woke up, aching and bloody, the skin on my arms torn back to the bone. Didn't I know the Antichrist was coming? Was already here, among us? Hateful and deceitful and above all else, the Roman. But then, after a while, my mom and my grandmother didn't want me spending too much time in church folk. I let his face wash over me, his voice was washing over me. I tried to ignore the old calumnies and half-truths, but I couldn't stop myself from hearing the pride and contempt in his voice. It burned me. And when he walked away, back to the atheists and the infidels that were before him, the day was dark. The first thing I did was get a cup of coffee. My faith, the faith of my father and my grandfather before him, was my core and my center, who I am, my identity. But no. They said it was all heresy and sin, and a conspiracy to obstacle and in the way of progress. You know, the church folk haven't always treated us so nicely. Even up to the 1930s, some missionaries would steal children from their parents and throw men off cliffs, taunting them that if their God really existed, he would save them. Now, they lure us to Bible clubs for fun and frivolity. 
The second thing I did was to buy another bottle of Johnny Walker Red. The damn? Might as well be just a damn, dirty, different soul to be saved. The God I knew was a God of love. Funny. Just quickly, quickly the world just turned him into a God of hate. 